Hello everyone, welcome back to the street market. On uh, today's episode, uh, we're going to do a number of yards, um, starting with a, a spring cleanup over in uh, Houston, downtown Houston. One of my uh, one of my favorite uh, neighborhoods in Houston that I like to visit, just because I'm so close to the city and I get a nice view of all the towers. You know, so it's, uh, I enjoy going out there. Um, I just got done selling a tool, um, which uh, I don't think I've talked about it before, but uh, one other service that I like to offer is uh, sales. I offer, I sell uh, used uh, lawn equipment. And the reason why I bring it up is because it's also tied into my system. My, uh, my business strategy, which uh, it's, the intent is to, to cancel out the expense, uh, maybe not 100% of it, but as much of it as possible. And so the idea behind it is, um, is you know, whenever you buy a brand new tool, it's, it's nice because you get a receipt, it's under warranty. And so, you know, you can use the receipt for, you know, tax time, you get a, you know, you could uh, uh, classify it as an expense where uh, in the warranty, of course, or anything happens to the machine, you're covered there. Um, I will say that I have, I used to buy my, uh, my, my, my steel equipment brand new from the dealership, but it was the uh, combi system that ruined it for me. I bought the KM131R with the uh, trimmer, edger, and uh, the hedge, hedge, hedge trimmer attachment. And that basically about three weeks into into it, the uh, machine goes down. Something inside the shaft. There's these couple of pins that are are uh, at the very end of the shaft. And these pins, uh, I guess, they're supposed to grasp your your attachment, the rod, and that's what spins it. Well, uh, long story short, they fell out. Uh, I took it to the dealership, and I was out of work for about three days. So I learned a couple lessons there. One, don't rely on the combi system to be your, you know, your your everyday tool as far as like, you know, string trimming, edging. Um, it's more of a specialty tool. I have, in fact, uh, purchased the combi system used several times. And just the fact that I use them as uh, specialty tools uh, has, has, been, uh, has been a pretty good decision. It's worked out very well for my system. So anyway, uh, so going back to my system, uh, right now I try to find all my tools used on the street. I usually can get them for anywhere from 175 to about, I think it's the most is $400, depending on what I get, you know, like a Echo 8010, I'm gonna pay 350 to 400 bucks for it, the VR800, I'm willing to pay 450. But so far, I've only had to pay up to 350 for them. And then, of course, your, your trimmers, your edgers, those are usually about 180 to 220. And so what I'll go ahead and do, I'll, I'll go ahead and, you know, obviously I'll inspect the heck out of them and uh, make sure I get a good used tool. And I'll go ahead and, uh, and use them until they, at the very least, pay for themselves. Once they pay for themselves, then, you know, obviously you can still keep using them, especially if it's a good tool, but in a sense, they're kind of useless because they've already served their purpose. And so, you know, and this is all while I'm still buying, you know, fresh inventory, um, but, you know, also depending on what I have in stock, you know, if I have only one string trimmer left, I'm not gonna try to sell it right away. But if I have several, then yeah, I'll, I'll, my prices, they, they, uh, they drop. Uh, so, um, anyway, so today, it's an example. Um, I wish I would have remembered to put it on video, but I didn't. It was a return customer, actually. And so I sold them uh, uh, just a KM131R, just a motor. His went down. And so, you know, I got my money back from that investment. I think I ended up paying like 180 for that motor and the attachment. But like I said, I only sold the motor. Um, so anyway, so back to the system, you go ahead and use these, or I go ahead and use these tools, they pay for themselves, 
they uh, become eligible for sale. And so my investment that I've got tied up in these tools, I end up getting my money back. And so I essentially cancel out the expense, obviously the fuel and you know, the oil and whatnot and all that stuff. Uh, there's really no way to get that back, but I've kept my expense to a bare minimum. And so that's kind of what the concept that I usually apply. I mean, that's kind of, that's the reason why I don't have a trailer right now and I don't have a zero turn because I just got done selling them. So, you know, as soon as I get more space, you know, back at the house, um, then I'll go ahead and focus on the, the zero turns, the tractor, I mean, the trailers. Um, but uh, anyway, I want to bring that up because um, for those of you who are just starting out, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of expenses, you know, trying to, trying to find the, the right tools and, and, you know, and basically the first year or so, maybe two years, maybe even longer, basically you don't really make too much money because you're, you're constantly buying new tools. You're constantly running into things that come up that, that slow you down. And so you want to, you want to address that best way to address that is by you know buying the proper equipment so uh, this is just something that I kind of just ran into and it's been working for me so far um, you know compare that to buying a brand new tool you know you buy a tool it's a like the KM 131R it's about 400 bucks before taxes you know brand new where you can use it for as long as you want and let's just say you uh, you want to get rid of it when you end up getting rid of it, you're gonna sell it for about 180, 220 bucks, essentially half the money. And so you'll end up losing half that money and that's something that I just can't get past. I don't like the idea of losing any money, you know, especially if I can uh, come up with a uh, good solution to, to avoid that. And so this is my solution that, you know, I suspect a lot of the big companies actually do. I know uh, in the auto industry, uh, especially with the rental cars, they uh, they have this elaborate system that's somewhere along those lines, which is actually kind of where I learned it from. And it's called the rental return program, where basically the manufacturers provide the uh, their uh, the fleet, the, these uh, rental companies uh, fleets, and uh, instead of you know these fleets having to purchase these vehicles, the the manufacturers offers them this uh, really cool uh, uh, buyback program, which, you know, there's obviously a bunch of conditions, but essentially what it comes down to is, is you know, if you return this car under so many miles, under such conditions, acceptable conditions, then we'll go ahead and credit you back, you know, this much money, you know, and you can use that credit to purchase the next fleet, you know. 2020, right now they, they have the 2020 fleet, so around you know the end of the year, September, November, they might uh, they'll start you know getting these vehicles ready for this return program, so that they can get their credit and you know and upgrade their fleet. Um, it's a good strategy, in my opinion, and uh, it's a strategy that that has been working for me. And I share this information with you. Uh, hopefully gain some knowledge out of it and hopefully it might be able to help you out. Alright, well I'm going to continue driving. Got another 15 minutes to go and then I'll see you guys back at the site. Hello everyone, welcome back to the street market. On uh, today's episode, uh, we're going to do a number of yards um, starting with a, a spring cleanup over in uh, Houston, downtown Houston. One of my uh, one of my favorite uh, neighborhoods in Houston that I like to visit, just because I'm so close to the city and I get a nice view of all the towers. You know, so it's uh, I enjoy going out there. Um, I just got done selling a tool, um, which uh, I don't think I've talked about it before, but uh, one other service that I like to offer is uh, sales. I offer, I sell uh, used uh, lawn equipment. And the reason why I bring it up 
is because it's also tied into my system, my uh, my business strategy, which uh, it's the intent is to to cancel out the expense, uh, maybe not 100% of it, but as much of it as possible. And so the idea behind it is um, is you know whenever you buy a brand new tool, it's it's nice because you get a receipt. It's under warranty, and so you know you can use a receipt for you know tax time. You get a uh, you know you could uh, uh, classify it as an expense. Where uh, in the warranty, of course, will anything happens to the machine, you're covered there. Um, I will say that I have I used to buy my uh, my, my my steel equipment brand new from the dealership, but it was the uh, combi system that ruined it for me. I bought the KM 131R with the uh, trimmer, edger, and uh, the hedge, hedge, hedge trimmer attachment. And that, basically, about three weeks into into it, the uh, machine goes down, something inside the shaft. There's these couple of pins that are, are uh, at the very end of the shaft. And these pins, uh, I guess, they're supposed to grasp your, your attachment, the rod, and that's what spins it. Well, uh, long story short, they fell out. Uh, I took it to the dealership and I was out of work for about three days. So I learned a couple lessons there. One, don't rely on the combi system to be your, you know, your your everyday tool as far as like you know string trimming, edging. Um, it's more of a specialty tool. I have in fact uh, purchased the combi system used several times, and just the fact that I use them as uh, specialty tools. Uh, has, has been uh, has been a pretty good decision. It's worked out very well for my system. So anyway, uh, so <clears throat> going back to my system, uh, right now I try to find all my tools used on the street. I usually can get them for anywhere from 175 to about I think it's most is 400 dollars, depending on what I get. You know, like a Echo. 8010, I'm gonna pay 350 to 400 bucks for it. The VR800, I'm willing to pay 450, but so far I've only had to pay up to 350 for them. And then of course your, your trimmers, your edgers, those are usually about 180 to 220. And so what I'll go ahead and do, I'll, I'll go ahead and you know obviously I'll inspect the heck out of them and uh, make sure I get a good used tool. And I'll go ahead and uh, and use them until they at the very least pay for themselves. Once they pay for themselves, then, you know, obviously you can still keep using them, especially if it's a good tool, but in a sense, they're kind of useless because they've already served their purpose. And so, you know, and this is all while I'm still buying, you know, fresh inventory, um, but, you know, also depending on what I have in stock, you know, if I have only one string trimmer left, I'm not gonna try to sell it right away. But if I have several, then yeah, I'll, I'll, my prices run, they they uh, they drop. Uh, so um, anyway, so today was an example. Um, I wish I would have remembered to put it on video, but I didn't. It was a return customer actually, and so I sold them uh, uh, just a KM 131R, just a motor. His went down, and so you know I got my money back from that investment. I think I ended up paying like 180 for that motor and the attachment. But like I said, I only sold the motor. Um, so anyway, so back to the system. You go ahead and use these, or I go ahead and use these tools. They pay for themselves. They uh, become eligible for sale. And so my investment that I've got tied up in these tools, I end up getting my money back. And so I essentially cancel out the expense, obviously the fuel and you know, the oil and whatnot and all that stuff, uh, there's really no way to get that back, but I've kept my expense to a bare minimum. And so that's kind of what the concept that I usually apply, I mean, that's kind of, that's the reason why I don't have a trailer right now and I don't have a zero turn because I just got done selling them. So, you know, as soon as I get more space, you know, back at the house, um, then I'll go ahead and focus on the, the zero turns, the tractor, I mean, the trailers. Um, but uh, anyway, I want to bring that up because um, for those of you who 
are just starting out, and uh, you know it's 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 a lot of expenses. You know, trying to trying to find the the right tools, and and you know, if, and basically the first year or so, maybe two years, maybe even longer. Basically, you don't really make too much money because you're you're constantly buying new tools. You're constantly running into things that come up that that slow you down, and so you want to you want to address that. And the best way to address that is by you know buying the proper equipment. So uh, this is just something that I kind of just ran into, and it's been working for me so far. Um, you know. Compare that to buying a brand new tool. You know, you buy a tool that's a like the KM131R. It's about 400 bucks before taxes. You know, brand new. Where you can use it for as long as you want. And let's just say you uh, you want to get rid of it. When you end up getting rid of it, you're gonna sell it for about 180, 220 bucks. Essentially half the money. And so you'll end up losing half that money. And that's something that I just can't get past. I don't like the idea of losing any money. Know, especially if I can uh, come up with a uh, good solution to to avoid that, and so this is my solution that you know I suspect a lot of the big companies actually do. I know uh, in the auto industry, uh, especially with the rental cars, they uh, they have this elaborate system that's somewhere along those lines, which is actually kind of where I learned it from. And it's called the rental return program where basically the manufacturers provide the uh, their uh, the fleet the, these uh, rental companies uh, fleets and uh, instead of you know these fleets having to purchase these vehicles the the manufacturers offers them this uh, really cool uh, uh, buyback program which you know there's obviously a bunch of conditions but essentially what it comes down to is is you know if you return this car under so many miles under such conditions acceptable conditions and we'll go ahead and credit you back you know this much money you know and you can use that credit to purchase the next fleet you know it's 2020 right now they, they have the 2020 fleet so around you know the end of the year September November they might uh, they'll start you know getting these vehicles ready for this return program so that they can get their credit and you know and upgrade their fleet. Um, it's a good strategy, in my opinion, and uh, it's a strategy that that has been working for me. And I share this information with you. Uh, hopefully, we can gain some knowledge out of it, and hopefully, it might be able to help you out. All right. Well, I'm gonna continue driving. Got another 15 minutes to go, and then I'll see you guys back at the site miss my turn but uh i'll go ahead and uh take advantage uh and uh, i want to add to what i just said is uh another another main reason which is actually probably the most important reason is uh why i do this is is maintenance and this is my maintenance program so i don't have uh somebody that fixes them for fixes my tools for me i don't uh you know, normally I would have to go to the dealership and I'd have to turn it in, and then I'd wait, you know, the whatever two or three days that it takes for them to fix it. And so I'm at their mercy at that point. So this is another reason why I kind of uh, I was kind of led towards this system. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a maintenance uh, prevent preventative program or, or a maintenance free program. I like to I like to say, you know, if you. Uh, once you start getting good at doing this, at, at, at turning them, at flipping them, um, you really don't, you really shouldn't have to worry about ever fixing these tools. And you know, keep, it, every now and then I, I do experience some kind of setback, but it's uh, it's usually something minor, and it's uh, it's not something that it's gonna take me all day to do. I mean, if it's if I have to disassemble a motor, I'm just gonna sell it as is and let somebody else deal with it. Just get back as much as I can for it um, but uh, since I missed my turn I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a nice little tour of my, my city well, welcome to Houston Texas one of uh, I mean I love this city I just I love the economy out here 
Um, I think uh, that's I think what keeps me going in this industry is the fact that you know I've tied my business into you know not just lawn care but the hustle. You know I, I love uh, um, I love how elaborate this this the city is. You know, how complex, how diverse, dynamic. It's just a uh, it's a great city where you can pretty much come in here with any idea you want. And as long as you uh, you put in the work, you you, you put in the uh, the time, you, uh, there's no way you can't be successful. Last year, I spent a lot of time driving out here, and, and I mean, this is basically I really enjoy the you know driving, and I enjoy uh, experiencing this city. You know, I, I love the skyline. George R. Brown Convention Center is over on the, uh, I believe, on the right side over here. It's, uh, it's where they held the uh, they had those Super Bowl. They had all these, uh, you know, all these uh, events uh, during that whole weekend. They have some of the larger events, Comic Cons, stuff like that. So right now, uh, the coronavirus. Uh, epidemic if you will is uh it's causing quite a stir throughout the country really throughout the world actually um so the city's not as lively as it normally is i imagine uh all the uh you know the shutting down and quarantine and all that stuff is 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 having an impact on all this and what we're seeing right now um on that note actually uh last two or three days uh, I've been experiencing some spikes uh, or uh, peaks in sales. I think you got a lot of uh, bored uh, homeowners at home finally paying attention to their lawn so that's a uh, definitely a good thing for for our industry check out these uh, gorgeous oak trees we go out here to uh, what's called uh, rice village there's uh, they got the uh, this whole neighborhood full of those on both sides of the roads so it kind of gives it like this tunnel effect lots of uh, shade lots of the it's a college uh, it's on a uh, near a campus college campus Rice University and so you have a lot of the uh, Houston's prominent uh, or future prominent uh, uh, people you know jogging and you know working working and just going out for a walk it's a uh, pretty cool I like going out there so this is my little spot this is where young future millionaires of Houston live well not all of them but a lot of them do but this is basically people young Houstonians who you know they just uh, started their career or they finally got their their big break and this is one of the uh, um, the highly sought uh, communities and it's located next to this uh, what you say business district I guess not business but you know they got your uh, bars your uh, you know your uh, restaurants uh, typical things that young people people like to do all conveniently located right next door even got a bike lane on here so true story that CVS right there is where I went to go on a break uh, not the last Super Bowl or it might have been the last Super Bowl I can't remember but one of the Super Bowls out here in Houston, I was working at a security detail, and I got to drive around none other than Martha Stewart, personally, and I, uh, in the experience, um, I don't know what it, what the deal was, some miscommunication, but another suburban came to pick her up, and, uh, you know, that information wasn't passed down to me, but... There was no way in hell that I was going to let uh, Miss Martha Stewart get kidnapped on my watch. So, I will post a picture 
I'll see if I can find a way to post a picture just to, to prove that I was actually there. Uh, my friend, uh, he was pretty sneaky about it, got, got a picture, even though we weren't allowed to get pictures with him. But somehow, he pulled it off and uh, he hooked it up. I'll share that with you guys. Harry, that's what I was looking for. Midtown. So this is Midtown. Got downtown, uptown, and Midtown. They got their parking garage. Got some condos. Normally a pretty lively area, but everybody's uh, at home. Another fellow landscaper blowing leaves towards me. All good in the hood. Looks like he's got quite a bit of work. All those leaves. The community is on a grid style. I think that's what that's the correct term. You gotta be careful where you're turning. Look at this. This is just a nice community. I like I like how nice and compact it is. Those of you who are claustrophobic, uh, that might not be the best neighborhood. So if I remember correctly, I believe this is my home right there. I think I can park right here on the side. Bethel Baptist Church. Nice little landmark here. Alright, so I believe this is the place. So this is what I gotta deal with today. Quite a lot of cleanup. Some fruit trees. I think uh which one's the avocado? One of these is avocado. And uh grapefruit. There's the grapefruits right there. Take a look at the inside view real quick. So you got a lot going on here. Let's go walk around. A lot of leaves. Well, check this out. Uh, some handyman came out here and destroyed my work last year and decided to zip tie everything. Which, uh, that's not, it's one way of doing it, honestly. I just got done telling the customer, uh, you know, um, expect a lot of uh, death out there or in there. But, it will provide for some good framework to fill in that uh, that gate So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get started so I just went out to go do an estimate right over there and She liked the price so we're gonna try to hurry up over here so we can get that done All right, so far I've uh, trimmed off these crepe myrtles so these guys were never really well maintained. As you can see, they've been, they started to knuckle already. So the right way would, would have probably been to reset everything and just start from the very bottom. But, uh, you know, I spoke to the customer and we came out with a, an alternative solution. Um, so they can still grow nice and thick. Since uh, it's in his lease that he needs to maintain these guys exactly how they were um, maintained. So uh, this ended up being the best uh, solution uh, to fit his needs. Um, so obviously at, uh, at each cut, I would expect uh, two more to come out, two more stems. And so next year when we come back out, you know, we'll go ahead and trim those off and we'll get rid of all the, you know, we'll get rid of whichever ones weren't, aren't best suited for the remainder of the season or the, its lifespan. 
And same thing over here. All right, so right now I'm trying to bundle everything up and uh, that way I can move on to something else. All right, there's my bundle. Uh, I usually bring some rope, but I forgot to bring it. So I'm gonna use my uh, bungee cord. I keep plenty of that on me. There you have it. A lot more uh, manageable, more uh, uh, so we can handle it better. And we'll load that up. Um, should be in our way right now, but uh, I'll get that loaded when I get a chance or when I need to. All right, so this is what I have so far. <clears throat> Not, I haven't done anything back here. But so far, I've been working on this guy. It's been a little bit of a challenge because I came out here with no ladder and uh, also one of these limbs that that main one right there was there was some there was a, a collision right here in this area and so um, that collision pretty much weakened this uh, the, the, the canopy and I'll show you around the front how it looks all right so there's there's a tree right there and if you slowly walk around you can start to kind of see a dent right in there. So you see right in there? That hole? That's what causes that, you know, you'll have dents and stuff like that if you have a, a lot of collision. So that's why it's important to always uh, free up. Look, check that out. See how that tree is moving right now? Nothing is holding it back. It's going back and forth, and it's uh, and so I cut some release spots all the way around those palm trees to where the whole canopy can move, and so that movement's going to create that. Uh, sorry about the hand. <laughs> um, that movement's going to create strength, and it's going to uh, you know strengthen it up. Uh, hopefully, throughout this growing season, it'll be more lush. And when we come back out, it's just just a matter of putting, you know, uh, cutting those uh, relief spots. Just so it can continue moving so you can kind of see the dent right there in that area so you know it's, it, it kind of causes like it, it causes a chain reaction because um so pretty much the damage is right there and and so everything started kind of um, um tightening it up right there in that spot and so everything around it kind of just grew over that and so it created just this weak canopy that you know once you fix it because it's weak you know it's going to fall and so you know that's that's one of the biggest concepts that I try to incorporate whenever I'm, I'm trimming anything so even before I have a you know a concept of what I'm going to be you know cutting what kind of shape you got to consider uh, you know many other factors um, before that even before that because a lot of times a certain shape isn't even possible just like um just like right there you see how those two are colliding so it would be impossible to create you know two spheres right there in that area to where personally i would create the outline of those spheres and then just where they intersect you kind of just um um kind of just define the the line the contour and then just let mother nature run its course and, and it'll be kind of a, a battle of the fittest. And so um, in, in, in there, so there was absolutely no air circulation in here. Like right now you can feel the wind. It, it feels amazing, um, you know, compared to what it, uh, it felt like before. It was just humid. Um, and so in here, you know, you don't have that many weeds. That's, that's, that's a huge advantage. Um, but most of the growing is in here and that's because of, you know, when the sun is over, is, is lined up right there, all that sunlight hits it directly. And so it creates, um, you know, creates life. Um, so we're hoping that the air circulation, the light that I'm about to open up in here is going to allow, you know, all this in here to kind, kind of gather strength, kind of uh, grow. And... Um, you know and produce more of a, a more healthy uh, landscape so anyway just something I wanted to show you real quick I'm going to um, continue and I'll get back to you guys right, so they had a, a lighting system 
kind of going through the ivy or the jasmine not really sure what this is actually but uh um, i gotta get that zip tie and there's a zip tie right there so um this customer had a handyman come out here and he said uh, the handyman advised them to use zip ties um and so i went ahead and just clipped those off and so what's going to happen now it's all that tension is going to be released and it's going to you know puff out and so now i can actually go ahead and trim it i can trim it so that it's even now keep in mind it's not going to come out perfect um because uh in order for this to work out it's gonna take um, a couple seasons few seasons of constantly maintaining it and trimming it and um, you know this customer really doesn't do that too much so that's why you don't uh, um, it hasn't worked out so anyway I'm gonna go get started on the trim work I've already trimmed up so <coughs> excuse me up top and now I'm just gonna do the sides Right, we're gonna take a short break. Take a five minute break. Just cool down. Um, although the air is starting to circulate in there, it's um, it, it was uh, pretty humid. So uh, definitely feel the heat now. So I'm gonna just cool off a little bit. Before I drank all my water. It's cool. I'm almost done anyway. Um, I think I may have to go to lunch regroup and then uh, come back and do the, uh, the neighbor's uh, lawn, which it's just a lot of trimming. It's not hard at all. So I shouldn't be there longer than an hour, hour and a half. Alright, so this is what it looks like. Alright, so uh, apologize. I kind of abandoned you guys. I was uh, running behind. I got the job, jobs, plural, completed. I'm pretty happy about that. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, unfortunately I missed a lot of material that I uh, could have covered. Um, but uh, hopefully you guys gained something out of the, this video, uh, if anything. Um, I know it's really hard to see me right now, possibly hear me. Uh, but uh, let's just go ahead and wrap this up. I'll make this short and sweet. Appreciate the views guys. Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything that I just went over um, Perhaps you disagree with something that I said or you know, uh, perhaps you can uh, you, know, you got some information for me that I can learn from and uh, please go ahead and uh, comment below share with others um, And as always I appreciate the, the views subscribe appreciate it later